In this video, you're going to learn 10 essential tips that every adult visiting Walt Disney World in Florida really needs to know in order to have a fantastic trip and get the most of everything that Walt Disney World has to offer. Hi, I'm Gary Benbridge of Tootsie Travel. Walt Disney World Resort has a lot to offer. There's so much to do. So let me talk a little bit about what's available. So first of all, you've got Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom opened in 1971. It's the classic park. Its icon is a Cinderella castle. In my view, it's a little bit dated now. It's very much for smaller kids and probably it's the least adult of all of the parks. However, it is the classic, it's the surreal icon of Disney World, so you might decide that this is a park you want to go. The second park is Epcot. That opened in 1982. And basically what Epcot does, Epcot celebrates human achievement, both in terms of technology and culture. And this is a really good park for adults because it is a whole mixture of some really good rides and also has the World Showcase, which showcases a whole range of different countries, their food, their culture, and their drinks. The third park is Disney Hollywood Studios. That opened in 1989. It's now very much focused on Star Wars, Toy Story, but lots of other links to various television shows and movies. And the fourth park is Disney Animal Kingdom. Disney Animal Kingdom opened in 1998. As its name suggests, it really focuses on animals, animal conservation. It's kind of like a mixture between a zoo, a safari park, and a theme park. Disney also has two water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. Then there's Disney Springs, which is a big entertainment, dining, and a shopping complex. Now, if you were to spend time at all of those, you would easily spend a day at each. So you could easily spend a whole week just going to the Disney parks, not seeing anything else in Orlando. So if you don't have to travel with young kids who you're not going to school holidays, when is the best time to go? Always focus on going on weekdays. Avoid the weekends because they become very popular for weekend trippers or even locals. And avoid any week that has either a public holiday or you know has school holidays. In particular focus on of course the United States. But bear in mind a lot of people come from around the world. So when are the best times to go as an adult? Mid-January to mid-February. March is pretty good but watch out once you get into April because you have spring break, you have Easter break. May and June are pretty good times. October, November and early December are also pretty good times. Going to Disney is not an inexpensive activity. Ticket to get into each park is going to cost you around about 130 US dollars per person per day. If you are driving to the park, it's going to cost you at least $20 to park. Because once you're in the park, you have all the food and the drink and purchases on top of that. Now the great news is there are lots of packages and deals. Now these tend to differ a little bit on country. So when you go to the Disney site, in your particular country, you will be served up various offers and deals. So for example, in the US it's much easier to buy single day passes or two or three or four day passes. If you're coming from say the UK for example, you'll find there's much more packages linked to family tickets, often around seven day or fourteen day packages. Now for example you're adults and you just want to buy individual tickets or shorter tickets, one of the things you do is go to the US site. So if your default site comes up you can sometimes change the country and visit the Disney US site, which is what I did, where I could buy actually a ticket for all four parks that only cost the price of going to three parks. Now what's also important is unlike say Universal, is the price of your ticket includes three fast passes, so it gives you the chance to avoid the long lines and get right to the front of the queue. So every single ticket includes those fast passes. The next step I have is a very, very important one. Way before you go, park by park by park, Look at the rides and put them in order of priority that you want to ride. Some of the rides that I would recommend are the following. So the Magic Kingdom, I would recommend Splash Mountain. There's a Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which is really good fun. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which is a real Disney classic. And Epcot, Soren, which is a fantastic visual effects mission space. You have two versions of that. Test Track, where you zoom out in a car. And do the whole world showcase, where you go around all those different countries. Now Disney Hollywood Studios, this is changing a lot, but there's lots of Star Wars rides. So you have Star Wars tours. From 2019, you've got the whole massive big Star Wars galaxy area. There's the Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, and then you have the Rock and Roll Coaster starring Aerosmith. And then there's the classic Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular. Disney Animal Kingdom, Pandora is so popular. They have the Navi River Journey, 
and the really and most popular ride of all, which gets big waiting times, is the Avatar Flight of Passage. There's the Expedition Everest, which is a crazy roller coaster. You have the Kali Water Rapids, and very highly recommended is the Kilimanjaro Safari, which is where you get a chance to see uh, lions, you'll see elephants, you'll see zebra. Now it's very important that you decide for each park which ride you want to do and the order that you do them to make sure that you focus on doing those rides you really want to do and you do not leave the park disappointed. That leads on to my next tip. How do you get the most of your day in each of the parks and how do you make sure that you get to ride those rides that you absolutely want to do? It does take some planning and here's what you do. When you decide which park to go to on which day that you're there, take a look at the opening hours. Now, any day that has the early opening, the magic hours, or the late closing, I would actually recommend you avoid going to the park on those days because everyone that's staying at Disney properties heads there on that day, and those parks are manically busy. Stay away because you will find the parks are just crazy busy, and it's really, really hard to get on the rides on those days. So pick your days very carefully about which days you go. If you're staying at Disney property, Two months before you go, but if you're not staying in a Disney property, one